Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to model a volume sensor. Before you get started, make sure you are using Visual Components Professional or Premium because you need access to the modeling tab. The first step is to clear the 3D world of all components. And I'll go to my eCatalog panel, expand models by type, click Component Templates. From here, I'll add a feeder template to the 3D world and a conveyor template. Notice when I added the conveyor, it automatically plugged into the feeder. If I run the simulation, the feeder creates parts, and these parts move along the path of the conveyor. So what we're going to do is add a volume sensor to this conveyor to detect these parts. I'll reset the simulation, and with the conveyor selected, I'll now go to the Modeling tab. From here, I'll go to the Behaviors drop-down menu, and under Sensors, I'll click Volume to add the volume sensor to the component. We now have to define the volume of the sensor, or the space in the 3D world where we detect components. To do that, you need to use frame features. So if you cannot see the frame features right now in the 3D world, go to the 3D world toolbar, click the frame types arrow, and then select this option called frames. And you can see I can now see the path frames of the conveyor. For the volume sensor, you need two frame features, one for its lower left corner and another one for its upper right corner. Let's now go to the geometry group and click the features drop down menu, add a frame feature, and using the move tool, I'm going to snap this frame to the same location and orientation as the mid frame. I'll now go to the feature properties panel and use the object coordinate system to offset the frame feature in the x axis by 100 and negative 100 in the y-axis. I'll now rename the frame feature to lower frame and this is just to make it easier to select and visualize. The name of the frame doesn't matter. I'll now add another frame feature. Repeat the same step. I will snap the frame to the same location orientation as mid-frame. I'll now use the feature properties panel with the object coordinate system to offset that frame feature in the x-axis by 100 the y-axis with positive 100 and the z-axis with 200. This will be the upper right corner of the volume so I'll just rename the frame to be upper frame. We're not done yet. We have to assign these two frames to our sensor. I'll go to the component wrap panel, select the volume sensor, and in the properties panel I'll define these two properties here called lower frame and upper frame. So I'll assign the lower frame and the upper frame. And if we notice when we did that we can see the volume of our sensor in the 3D world. So we essentially created a plane for detecting components. If you do not want to see the volume of the sensor in the 3D world you can go to the properties panel and clear the show volume property here. And we can still see in the 3D world the frames of where our volume is. Let's now create the signals used by the sensor to tell us when the sensor is triggered and by what component. I'll go to the Behaviors drop-down menu, and under Signal, I'll add a Boolean signal and a component signal. Let's now assign these two signals to our sensor. So I'll select the volume sensor here, and then in the Properties panel, I'll assign the component signal and the Boolean signal. Let's now add a Python script to define what happens during a simulation when the sensor is triggered by a component. I'll go to my Behaviors drop-down menu, add a Python script, and this opens the editor. And then let's create two variables. I'll write comp equals get component. This method is being imported from VC script and it returns the component containing the Python script behavior. I'll now define a variable for our sensor, so I'll write sensor equals comp find behavior. This allows you to find a behavior by name in the component. Our sensor has the default name right now of volume sensor. And we could use the on signal event or the on run event. Let's actually use the on signal event. So this allows you to listen for any change in a signal's value that's connected to your script. So remember the sensor has two signals so we can connect them to our script and use this event here. I'll minimize the editor. And let's first connect the Boolean signal. I'll go to the Properties panel, Expand Connections, click the plus sign, 
and I'll then select the Python script to add it as a connection. So whenever the value of this signal changes, the script will get a notification. I'll now do the same for our component signal. I will add the Python script as a connection. I'll now go back to my editor and in the on signal event, let's do a simple test case and print these signals values. So whenever we get an on signal event, we're going to print the signals value. Compile the code, and if we run the simulation, let's see what happens. Nothing. That's because we haven't told the sensor how to test or detect parts yet. So I'll reset the simulation, go back to my volume sensor, and in the properties panel, let's actually test just the path itself of our conveyor. So I will use a property called detection container, and I'll select the one-way path or the main path of our conveyor here. If I run the simulation, you can see that we still don't get that on signal event triggered in our script. So let's reset and then use a test method of precise. So this will test the geometry of components. So notice that we're just testing components that are in our main path using a precise test. Run the simulation. Here comes the part. And wow, will we will. We do get feedback in the output panel. So this part is triggering the sensor and it's printing the data in the output panel. So I'll reset the simulation. In the output panel, we can see we got the component object that triggered the sensor and a true value. But of course, once the part you know moves past the sensor, it resets. So we get a none value for the component and a false value. Let's use this data in our script. I'll clear the output panel. Go back to the editor. And instead of printing the value of the signal, let's say that if the signal value is equal to true, we know that a part has triggered the sensor. So let's actually stop the path of the conveyor. I'll use the sensor variable with its detection container property. And this is actually referencing the path in the conveyor, which is a behavior. So it has a property called enabled. And this allows you to turn it off or on. If I assign it a false value, that turns it off. We compile the code, run the simulation. We should expect the part to stop and the conveyor's path as well. And yes, that's what happens. So the part stopped here once it reached the volume of a sensor. And this part is not moving on to the conveyor because we turned off its path. Let's now modify the script to just stop the part, not the path. Reset the simulation. Go back to the editor. We can comment out this line of code here. And we'll use the sensor variable again with its component signal property. Oh, -ho. so the value of this signal will be a component object. And from there, that allows us to use a method called stop movement. So when the signal value is true, we know that the sensor has been triggered and we can use our component signal property in the sensor to know what component triggered the sensor and we can stop that part. Compile the code run the simulation and let's test. Here comes the part. It stops. Good. And the path did not turn off because more parts are still moving onto the conveyor. Let's reset and now use a different test method with the volume sensor. So let's go back to our sensor and let's actually use a bounding box test method. So you can test for when the bounding box of a component intersects with the volume of the sensor when the center of a component's bounding box is inside the volume of the sensor, or when the entire bound box of that component is completely inside the volume. Let's use the bounding box intersect first. Instead of using just a plane for the volume, I'm actually going to modify our lower frame here. So I'll select it in the 3D world. And using the move tool, I will offset the lower frame along the x-axis and move it back about negative 200. There we go. So now, this is our volume of our sensor. Let's now go back to the volume sensor, and we are using the bounding box intersect test method. If we run the simulation, let's see what happens. Nothing. That's because we now need to test these components on the same node level of our sensor. So if I stop the simulation, our volume sensor right now is in the root node of the conveyor component. This cylinder here is also uh, a root node that's attached to the 3D world. So these two items, 
they have the same parrot. They're on the same level in the same node hierarchy. in the simulation. So to fix our sensor we need to turn on this test option called test siblings. So now if we run the simulation here comes the part and it does stop. So because our sensor was told to detect parts in this conveyor's path on the same node level in the 3D world it was able to find these parts and stop them. So if we stop the simulation and take a closer look at the bounding box of our cylinder. It's easy to do. We just go to the tools group, use the measure command, and let's change the snap type to bound box. And now when I point the cylinder, you can see there's its bound box and that leading edge down here, the bound box, that intersected with the volume of the sensor and that's why it triggered it. Let's reset and press the escape key to exit out of the measure command. And let's use a different test method of B box center inside run the simulation, here comes the part. Notice that now it did not stop once the leading edge of the part reached the volume sensor. It stopped when the center of the part entered the volume sensor. So let's reset and use a different test method of B-Box fully inside. If you remember, now the bounding box of our part has to be completely inside the volume of the sensor. And that's what happens. So once the part is completely inside our volume, it stops. And if we look at the properties panel, the volume sensor is using a sampling interval for detecting parts. So right now the sampling time is 0 0.01 seconds. Now you can change this by turning off the use sampling option here and then that allows you to use a pulse signal to turn on or off the sensor. I've already shown how to do that in the model a raycast sensor video tutorial so just look to the end of that video to learn more about how to use that option. But this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com, and I hope you have a wonderful day.